interesting. So we have time. Uh, so I'll just open up any questions. Uh, Cecile? Yeah, yeah well, thank you, both of you, for these wonderful talks. Uh, Anna, I just, um, you know, I was struck in your, you know, your, your such an interesting approach to connecting the poetry with the idea of testimony. And if I could just sort of refer back to my own talk, you know, I was really struck in those letters, that sense of like immediacy, you know, that uh, is similar, I think, in a lot of the correspondence from Zomler, you know, to Yivo in the pre-war period where they're writing, you know, in this very personal way, you know, Yivo sends out these calls to send in material and people write, you know, sometimes to Yivo, sometimes to Weinreich personally saying, you know, um, you know, I, I work so hard to, to write down the, this folk tale and I'm sending it to you or, you know, and then even more so later with the autobiography contest where people are writing about their own experiences you know, and sending in their, their own autobiographies with letters saying, you know, I, I you know, I, I, this meant so much to me. I wrote, you know, my whole life story and I'm sending it to you because it's so important that you understand, you know, that you want to hear about my experiences. And that sense of, you know, of connection between a readership, you know, uh, and, um, you know, and in, in that case, you know, in Yivo, in your case, you know, Suskaber is an individual, right? This idea that, uh, that, you know, that these Jews felt this, this sense of, you know, they responded so much to this message they were receiving that their own experiences were somehow important, right, and that they found an interlocutor that valued their own experiences and their efforts, you know. And if I could, on the other end, sort of connect it to one of the points that Jan made, that, you know, in the wake of the Holocaust, one of the things that suits the bar, like others, you know, immediately start to do, you know, when they return to Vilna, in addition to, you know, trying to recover the material, material that they had hidden, uh, record, you know, recording testimonies, soliciting testimonies, people on the street just knocking on the door of the Jewish Museum in post-war Vilnius and saying, here's my testimony, I want you to have it. You know, so there's this real, you know, I think in the larger contest, what you brought out is sort of a, a continuity from the pre-war to the post-war, you know, through the war, obviously, you know, of this kind of communal sense, you know, that this is a real kind of communal enterprise and that individuals, whether they were, you know, off in Tashkent or, you know, wherever they were, you know, somehow felt the sense of connection to this larger communal project through, this, through these kinds of literary and uh, documentary efforts. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to <clears throat> respond, um, yeah, for on a on a larger, you know, theoretical level, it's it's that they need these uh, Vilna reference points, these street addresses, to have an eye, you know, and um, and and that um, the yeah, that we speak about. Oh, this is a personal poem. This is a communal poem. But I I actually think that in this milieu this ecology they need Vilna to be personal in a sense and that um yeah this continuity was something that he that his presence that he created you know I mean that this was an intervention that didn't have to be that this was a framework of being a person that had been shut down for these people you know living in Tashkent and so forth and and their way of, of telling about themselves of having an interlocutor it was gone, and his arrival, his word, opened that framework up again for them. And uh, so, yeah, definitely, yes, after the war, being the recipient of, of, of testimony was one of his most powerful ways of, of witnessing. This again for Hannah. I just have a question, perhaps you said it in your paper, but I thought I really listened, you know, both people. How did these refugees, mm -hmm. these far-flung refugees, yeah. who, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of new work on them also, but how did they know he'd arrived? So that's mm -hmm. the question. And then I just have a comment about the Ehrenberg that you use kind of as a foil. Yeah. Um, you know, Ehrenberg, obviously, as you know, is so very complicated. And hit that, what you, the section you read, and even Melle von Felke, I mean, that is Soviet ideology, you know, you know, Allah Kama Bakama. I mean, he's writing there. He's not writing, I mean, he's a Jew, obviously, and he's mm -hmm. documenting. I'm not in any way dismissing his documentary evidence of the Black Book and all that. I understand the complexity, but, you know, Sutskevel is writing as a Polish Jew survivor, 
to, and these Jews in Tashkent are responding to him that way. So I, you know, you made it, I guess, prophetic verses. I missed that. Profane, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wasn't, I actually would like to hear more about that another time. I wasn't convinced about that profane business. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, again, I'm not a literary scholar. So I just thought that needed a qualification, that Ehrenberg's style, that percussive kind of agitprop, mm -hmm. we have just triumphed over fascism. I mean, that, there is no ich, there's no self in that. So I didn't think it was sort of a fair binary made that Sutskever is a Jewish refugee poet, and this, the, the Jews know that. But I don't know yeah. how they actually know he got there, so I'd like that. They, they, that's easy. I mean, they know about him from you know the newspaper, from the radio, from the so, moment that he arrives. Yeah. Right, so, so but again, they know, it's yeah. easy, I know, for you, yeah. but I, yeah. he, tell he was, me, you know, who, so Soviet Jewish writers talk about him in the press that he's come. Yeah, so, okay, so, so one of the things, so several things. So one of the things that's missing from this story is, you know, the, the, the context of the motivation of bringing him over. In fact, it wasn't that strange. Um, there's, um, in the article I have, I know that I have the, the name of it, there was a parallel, um, you know, witness, a survivor from, from Minsk that they flew over at this time too, and and, and the, the no, you know, it wasn't that difficult at this time in the war to get someone, you know, they were flying, the, you know, supplies back and forth, so they also took people. To take a Jew, just a random Jew, you know, was, was rather unusual, but it was done. So they did this, and in part for, for the purposes of, of, you know, of motivation or what you could call dismissively propaganda, but at the time this was a weapon, you know, speaking, experience, so... So they did this with Sutskever, they did this with at least one other, you know, Jewish person in that sense, and they and they made sure to publicize it. So it was in it was in Pravda, it was on the radio, and um and it was in any kind that can't um underscore enough during this time period and uh Polina Barskova uh, has written about this of um circulation, of circulating letters, circulating, you know, um a basically a, a literary, a whole literary culture, um within uh from from letters and informally so the word that he got out was was done this way too now i'm i'm in um yeah it's not really fair to say you know i had i i expand on this in writing but um i'm using him ehrenberg as an example but it wasn't just ehrenberg it was also during Nister. it was also you know michoels it was a it was a whole framework of witnessing and it doesn't just it's it's not just it is a self um, yeah, of course, Sutskever has a different biography. That absolutely, I say, in addition to his biography. But this is, goes far beyond biography because there are the Yiddishists do this in Yiddish too. This act of translation, um, of saying and a profane of uh, by by profane and prophetic, I'm, I'm um, speaking about a distinction that Paul Ricoeur makes. And profane testimony, um, because earlier someone here said, oh, testimony is legal. Well, of course, testimony, testamentum, is a Christian idea, it's a Jewish idea, far more complicated than that. So testimony in, 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 in recur is, is um, there's, there's, there's Yermiao, there's Jeremiah, and his testimony is a truth that goes beyond any single occurrence. And then there's the testimony of empirical evidence. And this was a distinction, this is a distinction, I argue, that is alive in Soviet culture. And it goes beyond the war, and it goes back into Soviet um, selfhood from the Bolshevik Revolution, but, you know, beforehand, that to be a... And this is Jochen Helbig, your, 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 your oh colleague, <laughs> that to, to be a Soviet person is about self-reinvention, it's about man-building, um, about creating yourself, and, and this was um, amplified during the war and through these voices of the testimonial victims. So they come and they have their story and they're presented as very simple, okay? And that has sociological implications. These simpletons from the West, these, you know, they, they're, they, they're not fully enlightened where their words are valuable, they're truthful. But here, let me explain to you what they really mean in our Soviet language, and that could be in Russian or in Yiddish. Um, and they, they do this and they, expl they explain it in larger... Um, you know, spiritual terms. If I say ideological, it sounds like I'm 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 simplifying. No, it's, it's a, this is a selfhood. This is a there's in 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 the in, in the Russian version, Narodu Bitsi and Ehrenberg says, you know, it, it's it's a very dramatic. Let the word, let the one who's capable of reading on, you know, enlighten himself. Like this was 
this was becoming a self, this act of reading. And so I don't think it's, I don't think it's stiff or anything. I'm not being dismissive of it. But there is a certain relationship, and you can see this in the letters that are written to him and compare them to the letters that are written to Sutzkever. In letters that are written to him, someone actually says to him, I know my story is very um, simple, but please take it and make it into a message. I mean, they understood this. He was their advocate. He was, you know, intellectually above them, and they were handing their experiences to him. You translate it. And Sutzkever found a way of being spiritual, of having a prophetic message that integrated with the actual feelings and the language of being there. So that's what I'm, I'm arguing for on that. But, you know, you can remain unconvinced. That's it. You're right. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't right. I was okay. convinced about I, the, the recurrent yeah. distinction, whatever. Okay. It, it's, it's, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, okay. I'm not unconvinced about the difference between okay. the two. Okay, that, 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 that was not, works. no, that's utterly convincing. It okay. was that you actually expanded much more mm -hmm. on the Ehrenbergian Sovietization, yes. which goes to the Bolshevik yeah, you just did it more now. So okay. mm -hmm. just I'm not challenging your distinction. I was challenging your language. It's not as a literary theorist. It's not, which I am not. I therefore did not know that okay. distinction. No, that's but. okay. So Christoph, on the set you had a lot for uh, helping me to understand more connections between Miłosz and Sutskiewicz well, <laughs> based on nature, especially with his poema Naive, poema World, the world he was writing during the world time. It's a masterpiece, which is what you said, not about the nature, but making a nature as an autonomous kingdom, like a reinventing the world, you know, through the words. Yes. Rather than writing about the nature or things like that. That's very interesting <coughs> for me. And, and I have a question with Hannah mm -hmm. uh, mm, about the performative of that writings, poetry, during the ghetto and Holocaust time. Because we know about the printing, we know about uh, how the articles and so on. But there was something, I guess, and I would love to know more, like a basic ritual of reading poetry in the ghetto, Vilna. Mm. And they had, you know, this competition we know, mm. you know, of the best poem, and Suskeva won the first prize for this child of the grave. And we have some relations about the catharsis which happened mm. during these readings through the performative act. And, and you, you know, I, I've met him as a performer at the end of his life, mm. yes, and he, he still was a magician of the spoken word uh, somehow, but I'm very eager if you know more examples of how he or the other mm. uh, poets were uh, acting mm. first in performing, because I think it was the source of first the catharsis happened and then they wanted to transmit mm. it to Moscow, you know, to other things, but there was at the ground something like mm -hmm. performance ritual. Mm -hmm. I wish I had the I had some way of finding the radio recordings of him in, in Moscow, you know. But oh. I don't. I know mm -hmm. the people though wrote about it. They say I heard you on the radio, or even I heard that I heard I that I heard that you were on the radio, you know, mm -hmm. third hand because they're mm -hmm. living in you know mm -hmm. these conditions where one person has a radio and writes and mm -hmm. so I have the footprint of orality. That's what I feel I have. Um, that's what I study is is the footprint of this performance. Mm -hmm. um, and also they 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 the physical presence, you're right, to underscore this in some of the, quite a few of the letters, they say, and this also says something about photography at the time, and goes to David Schneer's work on photography mm -hmm. during the, 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 in the Soviet Union for Jews at the time, but some of the letters simply say, I saw your photograph. And it was this, it's this tiny, fuzzy, black and white mm -hmm. photograph, but the physical presence, the footprint of someone being present mm -hmm. there is, is very, um, very profound for them. Phys out, reading out loud, are, there are um, uh, several Red Army soldiers, Jewish Red Army soldiers, who write about reading Sutzkiver's poetry aloud to one another, reading his letters aloud to one another. When he write, they write to him, and Sutzkiver writes them back. I don't have those letters. 
Oh, nobody does. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, I mean, it's maybe mm-hmm. Sitzkever so writes them back. They read his letters out loud. So, so one of them says, um, you know, um, Tapuach read. I don't know how someone has a name Tapuach in this. <laughs> somebody explain that to me. But anyway, Tapuach read me your letter out loud, and then I'm going to write back. So it, so orality was extremely important. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I'm looking and I I'm looking at the footprint of that, and I love the the. You know these letters have an oral feel to them because their um, the urgency and the vitality of the act of writing is also a kind of performance um, in that sense. Um, yes, I I I, should I, I, I think it, Rana, it, yeah, it, 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 you have to, we still have some mid, questions. Mid, midnight is oh, uh, oh okay okay. <laughs> yes, we should so on. is there any? Uh, <laughs> Any so, five, so, so, just a f- so, five more minutes, and then we'll go to go to you. We think, uh, yeah. Well, well uh, we be short. <laughs> yeah. The answer might be long. Shoot short. No, we'll be short. Um, we'll be short. <laughs> talk about the um, uh, attitude of the Israeli estab- establishment towards Suskover. We know that the Yiddish. Um, um, uh, culture was uh, persecuted began and Schumacher went to prison for well, no, uh, didn't, didn't. making no, a theater. Fine, fine. No, they actually spent 24 hours in a ho- in Hong Kong and were arrested. I believe it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so they were arrested here, I just to say, not free. But uh, I was, there was just a newspaper, as you know, that the nice and there was a, a, a rave, short radio program. There was no Yiddish culture apart from the following Mexican. So, what was the attitude, and when it changed? When it changed? I think we should discuss this over dinner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll um, I don't know. Find a time. I, I, um, um, I. It'll be short. I think that um, that you know the the union the. Hister Drut gave Sitzkever this opportunity to have the golden Kate, mm-hmm. but a lot was kept from him and other Yiddishists um, violently, as you mentioned. You know whether it was a twenty-four hour, you know, stay in jail or it was a fine. It was a culture that was repressed, while certain things were allowed, um, like the golden Kate. At the same time, it was a complicated truth, but um, an, an ugly one nonetheless. When did it change? It hasn't. <laughs> no, okay. Anyway, blog, I told you. Okay. So, this, but this is Heather's topic. No, no, but just talk to me in a year's time and I'll have an answer for you. I, I would have said, you know, the same. I think okay. the fact that he, he managed to, uh, yeah. to, to get this journal going and to forge this, this uh, sort of Yiddish life there was really, in a sense, totally separate. I, I got the, I get the impression, totally separate from the official state and uh, everything. No, no, this was an officially funded... Oh, yes, I know know, know that. But I mean, the the two spheres, the two realms seem to be fairly Mm -hmm. separate, I, I, I think. There's been some, you know, recent work on Israeli cult, uh, Yiddish culture in Israel, and just in one sentence, you know, one in one, uh, you know, interpretation is that uh, the the authorities were much more concerned with kind of popular culture, right? So they wouldn't allow a daily newspaper because they wanted new elite to, you know, not to be able to rely on on Yiddish as a daily language, but to learn Hebrew. But whereas something like a highbrow literary journal. You know, it was okay because it less dangerous affect yes. the day to day kind of integration of immigrants and you know, y- you know, Yiddish culture and that kind of register as Sutskiver was producing was not seen as a threat to the kind of day to day functioning of an integration of, of immigrants. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, I just want to say one thing before we go to Salomon. We are looking forward to the last uh, uh, great uh, uh, paper here and. Uh, I just want to say that so what's so wonderful about this is that you present different aspects of this great writer's work uh, that kind of uh, add to the total picture. He was uh, a man of many hats. He did a lot of different things and he was, had this incredible ability to incorporate all these different sides of himself into his work. So you have to... You know, the testimony, uh, what you describe, you see that a lot in the later stories. He used, utilized that. And also the nature poetry goes into his stories and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And there's a kind of an organic whole to 
to the uh, to his body of work, which is kind of I think what's been so inspiring about this uh, gathering that we we can really see all the connections and and I think that is so important when you discuss it that you don't you know uh, he's a kultur tour as you say in Yiddish he's an editor he's a cultural uh, activist he's also the most refined poet as uh, Heather very beautifully uh, uh, presented so you have this incredibly complex uh, figure here that uh, uh, we we're not gonna this is uh, you know, it's not going to end with this. Of course, we are continuing to to engage with with his work, and and there will be other uh, gatherings and conferences. And so now we are going to move on to the final thing, which is kind of uh, me and Sutskiver, right? My encounter, <laughs> uh, my my encounters with Sutskiver, and uh, Salomon will start. And uh, after that, if other uh, people here have had any, and we've heard from Christoph, but if you want to share anecdotes, we can do that, and we can also do that over dinner. I mean, after that, we'll go out for dinner. But, <laughs> Salomon, it's your... Yeah. Yes, um, I, I was uh, introduced as a raconteur. Uh, um, um, C'est vrai. Uh, J'ai rencontré Monsieur Schuttgeber à Paris, euh, il y a il y a euh, 30 ans euh, 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 nous, a, nous avons bavardé en français mais aussi à yiddish <laughs> but I would take it in, in English or, or are you yiddish spoken I don't know you can do it in yiddish, do it in yiddish. Ah, no, no, does everybody know yiddish no I don't think so no, not yet. No, no. I, I will have it in English. So, um, it, it is about meeting, meeting with Sutskever, and uh, a meeting. A me when you meet, um, a meeting is always a meeting with yourself as well. And that's very important. Um, uh, about Vilna. My father was in Vilna uh, uh, in um, he, he fled to Vilna uh, in 1939 and he never met Sutskever. He never mentioned the name Sutskever at home. My father was a tailor uh, and uh, the only book we had at home was something he was, the name was I think from Malaychen, I don't, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, um, yeah, and my my second uh, um, uh, thread with uh, Vilna is that I was uh, um, married to a, to a woman that. Woman, it's it's important to say woman today. You know, <laughs> you can be married to anything, but I was married to a woman, <laughs> uh, and she was uh, actually from uh, uh, Montevideo, but her family uh, were from uh, was from Vilna, and she spoke uh, Vilna Yiddish, and and um, and I spoke uh, Lodger Yiddish, and I didn't I didn't speak uh, that much Yiddish. But, between my bar mitzvah and uh, until I met her, and and uh, it, um, we found out that the, the only language we had in common was was uh, Yiddish, <laughs> and um, I, I I actually have read some Yiddish uh, during those years between bar mitzvah and and the meeting with her, uh, uh, and um, but uh, that that was uh, rather great. Uh, uh, um, we were the only couple of Sweden in, of our age, that is, uh, that is um, 30 years ago, 31 years ago, uh, that, 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 were, that was a Yiddish spoken, there were no more. Uh, 
the rest p finished their Yiddish at their bar mitzvah. So I had this Vilna connection already. She was spoken uh, the same shit as uh, uh, the Sutskeber. What, what, that was his name, <laughs> uh, she, she was in the same dialect, you know. Uh, and um, uh, and I was speaking the Lodge Yiddish. So, so uh, um, uh, when I was at a summer course, uh, with with my my students here, I, I was a teacher of Yiddish, you know, you know, um, before um, Schwartz, Jan Schwartz came came here, because, uh, and we we um, I, yeah, it, it was like that that uh, I I I I'm no Yiddishist or uh, whatever you uh, you believe. Um, uh, I'm a Common doctor, common psychiatrist, common pediatrician. I don't know what it's called. It's, it's so difficult to pronounce those medical words. <laughs> psychiatrist. That's why I, I said this in the beginning. A meeting is always a meeting with yourself. Yeah. It's, uh, and, um, well, what happened to um, my father was, uh, when he came to Vilna, was when he never met Sutskever, was that he, he, he was uh, uh, caught by the um, Ru Russian, by the Soviet Russian uh, um, uh, NKVD because of spying for, for Germany, uh, which is quite strange, uh, a strange accu uh, accusal. So, but the, uh, I would say that uh, in that way Stalin saved my father because he was deported. He was deported to Siberia. My mother, they were married already. My mother and, and my, my brother, who is, who is no more, uh, 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 was left in, uh, in, in Lodz. Uh, uh, and uh, they, both of them survived the war. Um, and, and we were speaking Yiddish at home, and, uh, less after my bar mitzvah. Uh, uh, and, and then uh, um, what, what happened more? Yeah, I, 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 I was thinking of that uh, chimney. My, my uncle, who was the only one who wasn't in concentration camp, my uncle uh, was with my father. They they were in business in in Vilna. Uh, um, at the same time, they were fleeing. They were uh, in s somewhere southeast of Poland. And you know that seventeenth of September, Poland was occupied by Soviet Union, and then uh, they they moved to Bialystok and then to Vilna. Um, and my uncle. He, uh, it, it was a pogrom, it was a pogrom by uh, Lithuanian uh, people, and uh, he was hiding as well, as we heard here at Sutskeva. He was hiding, he told me, in a, in a chimney. Then he was saved through um, uh, this uh, Japanese consul in Ko Kovno, J Japan, Shanghai, San Francisco. Uh, until 49. Uh, um, how, how did I, when did I hear from uh, about Sutskeber? You know, I, I, I didn't know much. What, what I was reading was uh, my, my father's papers, you, you know, that the Let's Deny Us and all that, uh, which was uh, forbidden in Israel in the beginning. Uh, all those papers I, I read and uh, Later on, I, I, I would um, subscribe different papers, mostly communist papers, because uh, in communist papers you could read some cult cultural things. But, but uh, two Bundist papers. One of the Bundist papers was Lebensfragen. I say Lebensfragen today because Luden, uh, uh, Isaac Luden, you know, he, he's an author and journalist. He died one week ago. 
he's dead. No more. Ninety-five years. Ninety-five years old. I, 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 I usually, I usually met Luden in Israel, but now, now we are going to Paris. Finally, eight eighty-six. I, I translated the, this book. It, I had big difficulties. I must say, I had no. Uh, there, were, there were no other translation that. Uh, the French translation was later, German still later, and all that stuff. I, I, I had to be alone with my, with my uh, Yiddish text. And um, I was asking uh, about words that I didn't know. I asked my wife, and she knew some. Of course, I looked in the Werterbier, Werterbuch, Werterbuch. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and and, uh, and uh, <laughs> there I could find uh, it was it was Weinreich. He was a Vilner guy, but uh, he wasn't enough. So I asked my wife. He, she knew a little bit more, not enough. <laughs> then I asked all, all the uh, Vilner, all those who came from Lit Lithuania. Though there were not many, but they, they were usually. Uh, literarish, they were uh, literary uh, people, and uh, they, they added something. But I still s sat with 20 words. You, 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 you had the um, advantage of having all, all the other uh, translations, but, but uh, uh, I, I, I didn't have that. Uh, so I sat that with those 20 words and uh, what should I do? So I called Sutskeva. Yes. I want Sutskeva. And he was speaking in his uh, strange uh, uh, Bilner accent. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And all that stuff. And that was like speaking with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, well, he, he explained the words. And, and suddenly I, I said something that was not... Uh, that convenient, and he, he, he shouted at me, uh, every word is important. I <laughs> went through this. Th this is, this was just so terrible for me. S so this has to be exact. He, he, he became very angry suddenly uh, in, in the telephone. So, okay, so I, 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 I wrote down the, the explanation. And uh, I asked him, Could, couldn't we meet? Uh, and he said, yes, yes. And he didn't say yes, yes, he said, yeah. <laughs> 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 and um, uh, I, fin I finished this. You, you know, he, he, he used many, many dialect dialectical words and from Belarusian dialect. What, what did I know about this? I knew po Polish Yiddish. And uh, my my wife uh, and and the other guys, uh, they, they didn't know such strange words that he, that he used those twenty words which were there, and we met. So uh, we met in Paris. It was uh, in, in the month of May. It was uh, after. Uh, 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 it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it was my uh, month of May, 86. He, he had got the book uh, already. Uh, and uh, um, the first thing he said, you know, I let my friend check your translation. <laughs> okay, does he know Swedish? Yes. <laughs> he translates uh, Swedish from uh, 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 to Hebrew. And he's specialist on Perlagakvist, he said. He's a Swedish author. He, he, he happened to have the Nobel Prize, but nobody knows. <laughs> Outside Sweden, I mean. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and he said it was perfectly made. So I'm, 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 set, I'm very satisfied. And uh, so we were sitting uh, in the cafeteria, where, where else, in Paris, and 
um, his wife, Fritke. Um, I didn't call her Fritke. I, I was uh, here, another uh, madame. Aber Fritke is given ihr Nomen in, in, in text. Uh, and she, she was very quiet. She was still all the time. Um, and she was very nice. She was smiling. But uh, uh, somehow, uh, uh, um, Sutskeva got to know that I'm a medical doctor. So he was starting complaining like every everybody who is uh, <laughs> had a malade imaginaire. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so he, he had his heart and uh, <laughs> difficulties of breathing. And where is the where is the um, hospital uh, if if it starts again uh, and all that stuff. I was sitting in front of a partisan, I, th I thought. <laughs> this was something else. <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, and after this medical uh, uh, chat, uh, uh, he, he said, D you know, that there is somebody who knows more than me, but I don't know her, I never met her. There is some Scottish woman who is writing about me, and she knows <laughs> everything about me. So, good, good for you. I, 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 I told, uh, I told him. So, so you, you don't need to, uh, to, to, to be afraid of uh, being fakalert or something like that. <laughs> uh, being having um, dementia. Uh, and who was that woman? Heather, where are you? He was talking about you, not knowing your name. He only said that you were writing a, a thesis on him. And, your, and, and he pleased your knowing his life history better than himself. That's <laughs> <laughs> <That's extraordinary. laughs> validated my life's work <laughs> today. Well, we, we, we were, he, he was uh, talking, he, he, you know which year uh, he, he wrote uh, 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 Green Aquarium, yes. do, you know, do you know that? Yes. 54. Yeah, 53. Yeah. But, uh, but he, it's, it's all right. And he, he used to meet all, all the big shots of uh, France. Sartre was a close friend of him, of his. Uh, uh, he, he, I remember he mentioned oh. it, and he, he, he said <laughs> five minutes five minutes oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had it even start <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to meet you Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sutskev <laughs> 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 are you hungry are you hungry are you hungry well I, I, <laughs> I asked him Mr. Reb Havus schreibt ihr du in, I, I, I said it in, uh, on purpose in my worst uh, <laughs> accent. Havus schreibt ihr du in, uh, du in Paris und noch nicht in Israel. Hat er geantwortet? Ich kann nicht über Kassel muss er geantwortet, aber. Man can sit in Mari Asia. Man can sit on a plage in Mari Asia and schreiben noch hier, schreiben auf Yiddish. Also, I have to get into it. Also, I guess. Ja, wir haben noch geredet, und ich habe was als Sachen zu erzählen, aber wir haben. Er hat geschrieben zu mir, ich habe keine Mathe nicht gekannt, Leinen, er hat geschrieben und ich habe das gegeben, mein Weib und Weib, 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 ich habe ihr gegeben, mein Weib, sie Leinen, sie hat sich gesagt, ich sie hat sich gesagt, ich sie hat sich gesagt, und ich, ich nicht, ich bin, ich habe hab bloß gehabt, Bar mit, und, 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 Du hast gewöhnt, wie ein Fies von einem Krog aus Hippiket auf Schnee. 
Also so ich habe ich äh, gelernt, gar nicht, gar nicht verstanden. Er hat ge geschrieben etliche äh, Briefe, er hat, er hat ich kenne alle seine Bücher äh, und, äh, und äh, ich, ich habe sich beschäftigt mehr mit, mit nicht bloß Grüne Aquarium, auch mit, äh, mit verschiedenen äh, Poemen. Ich habe ich habe das Poeme in euch und, und, und aber ich finde Poeme von äh, jüdischen Schreib Poeten Bechlal. Ich uh, wrote, I wrote, uh, I wrote uh, Poems uh, uh, von uh, jüdischen Schreibern. Uh, um, no, from, 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 yeah, you, you, you know. Uh, Soviet Union, Poland, and, and so on. And, uh, that, uh, and among them, Suskeva. Then I came to Israel. Uh, uh, and I met him. Uh, he, he, I still remember his address. Uh, um, actually, I, I met the other Yiddish authors first. Uh, and they were very astonished that I, I had translated Sutzke, but he's, it's very difficult, you know, it's very difficult. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I met uh, one, uh, one author who, who uh, actually uh, had written also, he, 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 he was very strange. Uh, uh, he spoke English to me. Uh, and he said, my name is Natas, but It's funnier when you take it backwards. <laughs> you, you, you got it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I will continue. So, so um, and, and uh, I, I was invited to the, this author union with journalists and all, all that stuff, and I was speaking about difficulties of translating Sutskever uh, uh, into. Uh, uh, Swedish language, and there were, there were, it was full of many people. Later, when I came back, it was almost empty. Blois, Rivka, Bassmann, and Luden was there, and there is no Luden anymore. And then it was full. Uh, this is sad. Uh, uh, <coughs> but I came to this, I remember the address, Rechov Moshe Charet. Some politician, uh, 20. 20. He lived there in a qu quite nice area and quite nice. Uh, he had pictures, painter, painter, what's that? Painter? Uh, painters. Paintings, paintings, uh, uh, all over the walls. And not only over the walls, he had um, bookshelves which were parting, parting in the small uh, apartment in even smaller <laughs> rooms uh, and, and everywhere uh, paintings. Many Chagall, they were very close friends, uh, as nobody has mentioned yet, but they were very close friends. Um, they served uh, Fritzke, served uh, Chai with uh, um, well, uh, I have to say, a tea with puppy seed cakes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that was more than. Uh, uh, you're not able to, 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 to show a picture from this to, to the wall. No. Well, it's difficult. But yeah. It's difficult. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's not downloaded yet. Because my, my, uh, a friend of mine uh, also came to Sutskever and He, he made the illustration to the books. Mm -hmm. uh, and he came to, to uh, Sutskever another time. And then Sutskever was much happier. Hello, Mr. Mr. Nelson. Uh, um, uh, you will have a, a, a brandy. <laughs> We will uh, share a brandy. And, uh, and they were having a good time. And I was drinking tea and uh, listening to this, uh, the biggest poet after the Holocaust. Uh, the greatest po uh, after the Holocaust, and drinking tea, and um, 
and he was talking about not the Swedes. He he, he thought all the time that uh, it was Lithuanians. He, he made the mistake all the time that we Swedes were Nordic Vikings were Lit Lithuanians, and I I think uh, he didn't like Swedes. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, um, Yes, I, I made another mistake. I always make, you know, making mistake is always good for a psychiatrist yes. because then, then you 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 uh, you get the, the the truth from the patients. So I, I told him, you know, I, I thought that he was anti an anti pole as every Polish Jew in Malmo. Uh, they, they didn't like Polatin, ach, tui. Uh, uh, so I, 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 try, I tried with, uh, you know, the worst author I know is Mitkiewicz. Oh, he, he was jumping from, uh, <laughs> from the chair, his chair and, and uh, he was praising this uh, Mitkiewicz and uh, uh, I was thinking of, of, of your lecture on nature. Um, uh, he, he had many poems on nature, yes. which I read later, which are which were translated in Sweden in 1895. 1895. <laughs> but but he, he wrote many many nice uh, uh, poems. I didn't know of them. Uh, um, I, I just knew of uh, Pantadeus, which was some kind of shit <laughs> for, for me as well. But uh, he, he he became. You know, he he he, he, he wasn't happy. So scary. That was not, no, he was no happy man. You know, in my in my eyes, I, I might be a bad psychiatrist. I, I admit that, but uh, for me, with me, he, he wasn't happy, and uh, and and his wife was smiling all the time. I think I, I think she felt ill at ease in some way. Like me now. <laughs> so we, we have to finish. Well, you know, have you got two minutes? Have you got, five, minutes. Have you got five questions? I will answer them in one hour. <laughs> Within one hour. <laughs> at dinner. At dinner. Yeah, at dinner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the formal end of the conference. Thank you to Salomon uh, for a very enjoyable. Thank humorous you. presentation <laughs> and we'll go and uh, we'll pack up our stuff and go yeah i was wondering if we could get a picture yes and the other thing is i i'm i'm, I'm i think on behalf of everyone we want to thank you for organizing such a so much work to bring so many different people and to be so generous and give us an opportunity to meet new people and old dank. friends so really thank dank. you so much so uh okay so we should uh, take a picture we should take a picture yeah